Welcome back guys, we are back again with another video. And today we're going to be creating some custom blocks of bedrock. By this I mean changing the textures to the blocks, or you can change the textures to the entities, or pretty much anything else on your bedrock world. And not only that, I'll be showing you one of the easiest ways I've found to actually do it. So whether you've done it before, you're a pro, a beginner, you're going to find this way pretty good to make your new texture pack. So whether you want to make some custom paintings or signs for your world, perhaps directions and signals, change what your bees look like, or make your boats look a little bit more slick for them long boat journeys. And before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys, if you do want to grab yourself a server, you can head on over to seekerhost.co and you can grab yourself a great deal. With servers for as little as $2 at the moment, you can grab yourself any size package to suit you and your player base. So let's get properly into this and what are we going to need to actually do this? So let's go first with what you need to download for this. There's going to be two things and this is going to be a resource resource pack and that's from the Minecraft website. You can search this on Google if you search Minecraft add-ons for Bedrock. For links check my description, I leave all helpful Minecraft links all on my main website on JDog Official and you can find everything there. I like to leave them all on one site because you're probably going to find other ones to help you like MCC tool chests, amulet downloads, minigame downloads and all sorts of fun Minecraft things all on one page. Now once you are on the creator page you're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom or pretty much all the way to the bottom and where you see here it says how do I make a Minecraft text extra pack in bedrock you're going to click the introduction to resource packs once you click that you're going to scroll down a little bit more and the reason i'm explaining this exactly because it can actually be quite fiddly to find <laughs> it did take me a little while to find this particular link however when you see this link here download the vanilla resource pack we're going to click download to download it now this is going to give you a resource pack that hasn't been changed whatsoever it's going to be the latest one as of now is 117.41 and this will have everything in it all the entity folders all the block folders and everything like that next to download and you don't have to do this you can use gimp you can use paint but i would in fact recommend paint.net now to get to here you're going to get to get paint.net forward slash download once you're on this page scroll down a little bit and you're going to want to download the free version unless you've got a few bucks to spend Spare, then get the one on top of it. Now to download this, simply click the download now button, it will download, follow the instructions and you'll have it downloaded within about 5 minutes. Last on the list is the UUID generator, now this isn't a download, this is just a very helpful website which we will need uh, during the process of this, so I suggest just leaving this page up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our downloads folder where we just downloaded the vanilla resource pack. I'm going to go ahead and cut it from here, you can cut or copy it, however I'm just going to cut it so it's not left on my downloads. I'm going to head on over to my desktop now this can be anywhere just as long as it's easy for you to find at this point just make a new folder right click go to new make a folder and then rename it i've just named mine new resource pack so we're just going to open that and we're going to paste it in there once pasted right hand click on the vanilla resource pack and we're going to go to 7zip and we're going to go to extract here of course if you haven't got 7zip that doesn't matter you can just use any extraction method you have 7-zip just is a little bit faster um, and you can download it for absolutely free as well. As you can see we've extracted every document from the vanilla resource pack which we can now delete the zip because we don't need that. We've got everything from the animations, sounds, text, entities, blocks and everything else. Now if we head back to our desktop we are going to need one more new folder right here and this is going to be to create our new add-on. So I'm going to call mine add-on 2 because I've already got an add-on 1 and we're going to need a few files from the new resource pack. Realistically you don't need all of them. Once you've extracted all of your files into the folder here, we're going to need a few of these files. So that is going to be the pack icon, the manifest, and if you want to click um, a few to select them, just hold control and then click them. So we're going to need the pack icon, the manifest, and of course the textures. So I'm going to click all three of them. I'm just going to copy them over and we're going to come back to the new folder that we just created that has nothing in. So this is going to be our add-on folder. This is going to be where we have the files and we can create our add-on with them. So with that all finished, we have three things in our folder and this is going to be what we're going to make our add-on with so at the bottom we're going to start with a pack icon to change this right hand click and i'm going to go to open with this is where it helps to have already downloaded paint.net uh, so we're going to open with paint.net and here you're going to get the icon um to zoom in control plus zoom all the way in um you can change this a little bit if you want of course if you are creating your actual add-on um i would suggest changing this obviously i'm not going to do too much because this is just a tutorial um but as you can see you can really zoom in there and you, you can change it you can do lots of things with paint.net i'm just going to add that little square either way that is going to be how you change your icon once you have changed it um, and obviously keep it in the same dimensions we're just going to go to save 
Press OK and it's going to save it in the same file again so our pack icon is now changed. Next up, and this is quite an important bit, we're going to go to the manifest.json. So let's just double click that and open up this. Now this might seem a little bit confusing, however it really isn't once you actually get used to the process of this and you don't really have to do it too many times either. So for the description, this is going to be simple. This is going to be your pack description. So I'm just going to write test pack one there so we have test pack one and you can do the same thing for the name or you can change the description and the name that's totally up to you just make sure that you keep it within the quotation marks and don't change anything else so again with the name here I'm just going to take out the vanilla resource pack and I'm going to control V just to paste that in, making sure the quotation marks are exactly in the same place. Last but not least is going to be the UUID, the version. We don't really need to do anything now. I will show this later on in the video when I show you how to update a pack, but for now we don't need to use the version at all. So let's just open up the UUID generator. I'm just going to refresh the page to get a new one and it's just going to give you a different UUID. So I'm just going to copy this and I do suggest using the generator. That's because there's certain things that you can't change on there. So and things that you can so that way is at least a safe way of doing so so i'm just going to do a control v and just a quick explanation to why we have to do this is because you don't want to be using the same uuid as another pack so it'll be a duplicate pack or stuff which just won't work so just change the uuid for this once we've done that like i said earlier we're just going to leave the pack version as one because it is the first version so go ahead go to file go to save we're going to save that we can close it down so that's two out of three things completely done now now we're going to go over to textures so we're going to open this up and here you can find all your textures everything from your paintings to your items maps your gui obviously this being an example i'm not going to sit here and do every single item or entity so let's just start off with painting just to show you how you can change it once you open up the folder right hand click and you're going to go to to open with paint.net once more. If we do control plus zoom in a little bit, you can see that this is how the paintings are displayed um, and this is how you're gonna have to have them. So if you want to edit your images on there, make sure that they fit in the correct areas. Now, just for the sake of the video, I'm simply just gonna put a red cross between all of them. That way we know that any painting that I put out should have a red cross on. Um, and if it has, obviously the texture pack has worked. As a side note here as well, you can copy and paste pictures. So you can do a control V and paste the picture. You can then resize the picture um, and sort of shape it in what you want it to be so if you want to add it to this painting for example you can just make sure that it fits within the borders um, and then you can also do that of course once you're done go ahead again file save um, just save from the same location press ok and that will just save over the file ready to be used again now let's head over to entities we can go over to cows for example and you can see these are the three different types of cows so, so I'm going to go to the most seen type of cow we're going to right hand click go to open with and yet again we're going to go to paint.net as you can see, it might take a little bit of time to get used to in what formation these are. Um, once you do get used to it, it's much easier to actually change them. But of course, once you're first looking at this, um, it's a little bit weird. So as you can tell, the little the face is over here. Uh, the top of the head is here and you've got other parts. Either way, I'm not going to sit here and explain that. That's probably best done with a little bit of uh, time and practice and just changing different blitz. However, again, just as an example, I'm just going to change this entire cow to be purple. Once you've done um, all your editing, go ahead to file and then press save again now you can see we've changed our cow it's going to be looking a little bit more purple um, and this is basically the gist of how you can change everything if you want to go change your entities you can scroll down here you can change all the entities if you go to GUI you can see all the GUIs that you use and you can change them around a little bit as well in your main GUI display so now we've changed the textures that we want to change we've done our manifest.json and we've got our pack icon what we're going to do now is we're just going to highlight them all we're going to right hand click we're going to go to send to and then we're going to go to compare pressed zip folder so it's going to create this folder for us call it whatever you want this is going to be uh, your pack name so i'm going to do this as test one pack all together and then at the end where it says zip you're going to want to change that to say mc pack now if you don't see zip what you're going to need to do is come up to view on your file explorer from view come down to file extensions and just make sure that's ticked if you see if i untick it that's going to disappear if i tick it you're going to see the end of the file extension so again i'm just going to go to rename this we're going to go take out the zip part and we're going to replace it with mc pack now if i click off of it it's going to give me a warning saying that it might come unusable it's a different file extension and we're going to press yes as you can see that's turned a little minecraft icon now if we double click this it will now open up bedrock now if successful we've seen that it started to import and as you can see there we got successfully imported test pack one if it wasn't it will say failed if it's a duplicate it will also say this is a duplicate that might happen if you say if you use the same uuid and the same version as well either way let's just go over to play let's go to create new 
create new again I'm going to create a creative world just so we can test it and then you can come down to resource packs under my packs you're going to find test pack one which is the pack that you just created we're going to click that and activate it now let's go ahead and create the world so now that we're all loaded up let's go ahead and spawn a cow and we'll also get the painting as well just to make sure that the actual add-on has worked so let's go cow first yep there we go we got our really weird looking purple cow i somehow managed to get it so actually the whole body's done so i'm quite proud with that one and next up let's go for the painting as we can see they're all marked with some horrible red crosses going across them but either way we can tell that the add-on has now worked so now we have our add-on working that's probably most likely where most of you are going to go however an important part and before you do go will be if you want to update it what do you do so let me show you what you're going to do here now the easiest way and maybe it's not the easiest way but it's the easiest way that i have found um, doing this again i'm not an expert but you know i managed to work my way around this um, this is going to be to change the texture of course so go back to textures exactly the same way that you were doing it that's going to be on your add-on folder so again you don't really have to um, worry about this new resource pack anymore the one that you understand zipped you can of course use that if you want to keep the original documents in case you do something wrong you can just load one back up however we're just going to be working primarily off this one here and that's going to be with the textures the manifest and the pack icon so as you can see here that's the last one that we just created however let's say we want to make a change i'm going to go to textures i'm going to go to entity um, let's go to boat i'm going to go open with paint.net with the oak boat and let's just change something that's going to be really hard um, to miss so let's get our pencils get some red and again let's just draw big old red lines over it so we definitely know that it works next up go to save again of course save that press ok close down the document so as you can see we have our boat here it's got the red lines on so we're just going to come back one more um, to where we had the boat folder here of which we went on now i'm just going to leave this folder aside i'm going to go on to the add-on again and where we made our first add-on version i'm just going to right hand click and i'm going to go to rename just in the same way that we made this an mc pack we can make this back into a zip so by changing this to zip it's just going to change it to a zipped folder i'm going to press yes here and we've basically got our first pack into a zipped folder now if i drag this to the right and i drag the one that we just edited on the left i'm going to go to our add-on zip pack which was the mc pack and we're going to go to textures and then we're going to go to entity this is where we last changed our boat over however here on the right hand side we have our first add-on which hasn't got anything changed to the boat on the left hand side we have the add-on that we have changed the boat so what i'm simply going to do is i'm just going to hold it and i'm going to drag it over into this part here and we're going to click yes now what this has done is it's just overwritten the old boat file in our first pack that we made with a new boat file so once we've changed our boat over we want to come back a little bit and we want to go back to the manifest.json so if i double click this um, it's going to show us what we last put down for our first add-on however what we want to do now is just simply change the one to two because this is version two of the same add-on now let's just go to save hit save there close this little window down it's going to ask if we want to update the archive which we will and now if we go back once more we've got our complete test zip one now this is what we used for the first add-on however we've now updated it to be the second one of course so now that we changed the things that we wanted to edit for the second add-on or the second part of the add-on after we've done our first test um we've got in a zip folder much in the same way we can right hand click we can go to rename and then just change this back to mc pack this is primarily how you can just keep changing this folder from a zip folder to an mc pack if we click it's going to give us the same message we can press yes and we've got the little minecraft icon now let's double click this this should now open up our add-on with all the new changes as well so we've got all the changes that we made with our first add-on plus the changes that we've just made now as you can see there we got successfully imported test pack one so it's the same test pack of course if it had the same uuid and the same version number it would say there's a duplicate and it wouldn't work so i'm just going to go to create new again um i'm going to change this to creative one more time if we go down to resource packs you can see in my packs we now have two uh, the top one here is the latest one so i'm going to select the latest one because it's going to have both things from both test packs and we're going to go to create perfect we're in a brand new world so now let's test out the boat as well which was the oak boat another thing that i just want to add is that you can change the icon images as well using the same way you're going to be able to find all of these on textures so just change the texture for the actual icon you'll see because it's not a 3d image all around the place it's just an icon image like this and let's also spawn a cow just to make sure that our original add-ons have worked and they're all working together so first of all let's go with a cow we got ourselves a purple cow there now if we spawn a boat we can see that we've got the red lines all over it so that is going to be how you update your pack so guys i hope that helped it's honestly taken me the good part of about six months to properly figure out an easy way to do this so i hope this short video will get you well on your way to making your own texture pack thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time bye bye